up M squad welcome back to the channel today you guys as y'all see by the topic y'all already know it's about to go down okay let's get into it let me go ahead and get the logistics out the way if you are new to the channel welcome thank you for stopping by thank you for supporting your girl if you are one of my loyal supporters, I just want to say thank you. Thank you for continuing to support the channel. Thank you for your shares, your comments. Um, just thank you for watching. I just really appreciate you guys. Make sure y'all watch these ads. Run them up, run them up. That helps the channel. That helps the channel to grow. That helps me as a content creator. Also, you guys... There is a membership if you want to join my channel. Um, I've been created a membership. I'm going to work with the numbers as far as it make it easier on you guys to be able to join the channel. I want to start making exclusive content for my members once you join. Um, it's going to be just for my members only. Is, uh, I'm going to set it up that way. It's not going to be for like my regular supporters. So if you would like to join, make sure you click on join. I already got a video that was already set up to welcome you guys over. Like I said, I'm going to be working with the prices and trying to change it to make it more affordable. But I do want to start making exclusive content for you guys that I'm not going to be able to share on my regular channel. It's going to be exclusive only to the members that who have joined the channel. It's going to be raw. It's going to be uncut. I'm just going to give it straight and like it is. So if you would like that exclusive content, make sure you join the channel. Okay? As well, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, I don't know what you're waiting for. Just press that little red subscribe button. Make sure you give this video a thumbs up. And leave a comment or two on this video and let me know how you fear. Make sure you fear feel and make sure you share this video out on all social media platforms also your guys all of my social media platforms is in the description box down below so make sure you go follow subscribe check it out and also make sure you go and check out our family gaming channel as well go subscribe go follow on facebook subscribe on youtube we are on all social media platforms okay so the links are in the description box. It will go directly to the channel where you can easily follow and subscribe. So I got all those logistics out the way. Let's get into it. This is a very, very touchy topic. But I see that there are a lot of people that are coming out about this topic. But it's not talked enough. Um, I did see with Oprah Winfrey and Ayana, Ayana Van Zant had touched on this topic as well. It was very deep. But this particular topic, top, topic, <laughs> God, this very, this topic speaks home to, home to me because this is something that I have experienced personally. So, I'm going to say off rip, no offense to no one, but this is my truth and I'm going to speak my truth. This is the year that I'm going to be speaking a lot of truth on a lot of things. So, I got a lot of more videos that is going to be coming up here pretty soon. So, y'all stay tuned for that, okay? But I may just put it on the exclusive. I may just do a video just strictly for the exclusive content. So, if y'all want to get a hold of that. Make sure you go and subscribe. So, this topic is very near and dear. Because I have experienced this majority of my life. Um, it touches home. I was in my room the other day and I was just sitting and pondering, you know, what should I talk about? And 
there are a lot of things that I'm trying to do. I was thinking about changing the name of my YouTube channel. Just put maybe, I, I just got a couple of names. I might just put Life of Mia, uh, Mia's Life. Um, because I really don't too much um, show like mommy things on, on my channel. It's just a variety of things, but it's things that I do. So, um, I'm in the debate regarding that. Um, so, let me know what y'all think in the comments. Let me know, you know, should I change it or should I just keep it as is? Y'all just let me know. But, I do have a notebook of things that I did wrote down. But, majority of this is going to be coming from straight from the heart. Um, it's... Daddyless, daddyless girls. Um, the effect of not having a father in the home. Um, that was the topic that came to me as I was sitting in my room, just pondering on what should I talk about. And that's what I normally do. I just sit quietly in my room and just ideas began to come to me and I just write that stuff down. So, this was the number one thing that came to me. And, um, I'm going to start off by when I was a little girl. My daddy, my father, has never been in my household. Um, when, as I was growing up, um, basically my mom raised me. Yes, I did see my dad here and there, but I know my dad. I know my father. I know where he lived at. He know where we stayed at. But my dad was never in the home. I don't have no memories of my dad ever being in the house. So, you know, as far as I can remember, the, the furthest I can remember is at the age of four or five. So, um... I know with every house that we stayed in, I just have memories of every house that I can remember that I stayed in. So, but as I began to get older and I seen some friends that had their father, you know, I began to question myself, like, why my dad is not there? So, you know, as a mother raising her children, you, can, you only hear just your mother's side. Um you too much don't hear the father's side of what happened, the reason why he's not there. You find out years later the reason why, you know, your father may have been there at the beginning and maybe you was too young. At that time, he may have left. Um, some children, they grew up with their dad at a certain age, maybe like five, six, seven, maybe 10 years old, 15. Some even in their 20s and their dad leave. Um, but at least they got to have their father in the household. Me, I don't ever remember my dad being there. Um, it really hits home during father and daughter dances. Sorry for that. I'm getting notifications. Let me see if I can turn it off. It really hit home when, you, you know, like I stated, when you have father and daughter dances, um, birthday come around, holidays come around, at that time when I did celebrate it, uh, when you begin to talk to boys um, at that particular time. Um, but as you get older, you that's another topic. Um, though that is the time being in your child's life at a very early age that is the time that you definitely need to be in your child's life so you can be able to groom them especially a father being in the daughter's life is very important because that father can guide that daughter and tell her show her and also tell her how men are truly are what to look out for um your father can put you up on game. Like, okay, if this man says this or he tries to do this, you know, don't fall for this or don't fail for this. Your dad can give you clues and give you things to look out for in a man. But when you don't have a father in your house, most females, 
look for a father figure in the male that they are seeing at that time. It don't always turn out good. Um, sometimes you can go from man to man to man because you never had a stable father in the household. Um, and then also, this topic is not strictly for females as well. This topic is for men, uh, for boys as well. There are a lot of boys who needed that guidance to need to how to be a man because I don't care what nobody say. A woman cannot teach a man, a little boy, how to be a man. A woman can only teach her daughter how to be a female, how to be a woman, how to guide her household, how to keep herself. I hear that a lot. Well, my mama is my father and my dad. I said that, but as I began to get older, and I'm like, my mom is not my father. That's why God created man and then created female. You're supposed to have a man in your life, and you're supposed to have your female, which is your father and your mother in your life. You know, you begin to notice things as you get older, and you be like, dang, that was a wrong way of thinking. That was the wrong way of thinking. And, you know, not having your father in your life, you choose females, I'm talking on a female perspective, you choose to go down the wrong path. Especially if your mother had multiple children and she's a single mother and she's working all the time to try to keep a roof over your head and clothes on your back and food on the table and trying to take care of her household she does not have the time in the individual time for for each of her children because she's so busy and tired trying to keep a roof over your head sometimes you may not get that one-on-one -on -one interaction that you need for guidance so those are the things that that had that will affect a chap a child, excuse me, who does not have that other parent in their household. Um, a father is very important for a household. I don't care what nobody say. People always claim, oh, well, as long as I got my mom, I'm good. No, you're not good because you will be affected from that later on through life because you will see other people or other children that you went to school with you'll see other people out when you out and about with your mother or when you out and about with your friends you'll see that you'll see a father holding his daughter's hand and guiding her and taking her out shopping or they out to eat or they just out events having a good time you will see that it will affect you because that woman don't know how a man is until she get with that man and she finds out she finds out on her own and through mistakes that she have made. So, you know, this is a very very touchy topic like I stated and um and I do want to let y'all know that I was heavily affected by my father not being in my household. I love my father. We are close. I can talk to my dad about anything. There has been times where you know, I may see my dad maybe once a year or if that, you know, but still not having your father there on a consistent basis it really will have you jacked up out here. It really will. It will really, really have you jacked up. So, Y'all let me know what y'all think in the comments and, you know, tell me, you know, have you experienced this? Have you gone through this? Have you seen, like, other family members or friends that you grew up with that did not have their father in their life and how did they turn out to be? Some people may turn out to be good. Some people are struggling. But and then years later, they was like, well, my father wasn't there. He didn't teach me this. And I didn't learn this. You know, it does come to effect because you don't have that man, that authority figure in your life to guide you and tell you the truth. You know, sometimes mothers may hold back the truth from their children, but fathers, a real father will give it to you straight, regardless of how you feel. They'll come off harsh because that's how God created them to be, to give it to you straight, raw, uncut. Um, females, we tend to have low self, 
low self-esteem issues. We have abandonment issues. Uh, we think low of ourselves. Any man that may come up to us and whisper his sweet nothings in our ear, we'll be like, ha ha, giggling, tee hee, ha ha. And then when you don't gave up the goods and he leave you on alone, you are hurt and bothered about it. Because you was like, oh, I found a good person. I found a good man and he's going to treat me right. And he said this and he said that. And then time you gave up the goods, he's gone. He's gone because we missed those red flags. We didn't know what to look out for from the beginning. We just saw a man who's interested in us, even though I might have low self-esteem. But this particular man, he saw past of how I look, how I carry myself. He gave me some attention. The moment that a man gave me attention, you felt good about yourself. And then he just throw you back to the wolves. And then sometimes we repeat that cycle over and over and over again. And as we get older and start learning things and finding out things, you're older now. You know what to look out for. You know those red flags. But even if you know those red flags, you know what to look out for, sometimes we still fall for the same thing. It's like a repeat cycle. So like I stated, you have low self-esteem. We feel low and we love when the man comes along and say, says the right things. Like I said, it'll make you feel good about yourself. You be like, oh, he's talking to me. Out of all these girls, he's talking to me? Wow. It's because you're getting the attention that your father didn't give you because he wasn't there. Your father didn't guide you and to teach you what to look out for, what to accept and what not to accept. I remember this saying, they said, a father is, a first, is the first person to hurt a female. And that is true. That is so true to hurt his daughter. A father is the first person to hurt his daughter if he's not present and if he's not there. Now, there may be some people, their father may have passed away prior to. So that's when you have uncles, granddaddies, if they're still living, to step in and not fulfill their daddy shoes, but they take place in fulfilling what a father should be. They supposed to replace it. Uncles and your grandfathers supposed to replace that. Because a brother can't replace that. Your brother is your brother. Your brother can't not replace a father figure. That's where your uncles and your granddaddies, if you trust them to be around your children, because some people can't trust their family members to be around their children. But if your uncles and your granddaddies are trustworthy to be around your children, that's when they're supposed to step in and guide the girl and the boy. So... Um, as a little girl, we don't feel secure because we don't. We don't feel secure about ourselves. We don't may not feel secure about the situation that we in. Um, because your father's supposed to be your protector. He's supposed to be the protector of the house. And when you don't have that protection, little girls don't feel secure. They feel unwanted. Um, we tend to grow up with this wall built up because we don't trust we don't trust easily we don't trust nobody 
we look at men as like they're dogs because our father wasn't there. And then when your father do come around, yeah, you may speak to him. Sometimes you may not speak to him. You got this wall built up. You don't trust him. You don't want to talk to him. You don't care about him. You say that you don't care about him because he didn't care about you. He didn't take out the time to, to be with you. It could be for selfish reasons. It could be how the relationship between your mother and him went down. He don't want to deal with drama. He don't want to deal with foolishness. It could be a plethora of things. I may not pronounce it right, but it could be a multiple of things of why your father wasn't there. He wanted to do his own things. Maybe he was strung out. You know, maybe he have an addiction problem. That's the reason why the mother and the father is no longer together. He could be locked up, taken away. But if he's locked up and taken away or he have an addiction, those are the things that he decided to do. So that still feels like you're not secure. You're not feeling love. He decided to live his own life and not even think about you. You'd be like, dang, you're not thinking about me. You don't want to pick up the phone and call me. You don't want to spend time with me. I got to see you once a year. If that, it be years go by before I spend time with you. Like, what's up? So, like I said, that I do have some things written down here. Um, without the Father, we are not used to constructive criticism. That is so true. As a woman myself, I completely agree with that. We don't accept constructive criticism. We think it as hate. You don't love me. When a person tells you the truth, you think it as hate. Oh, you judging me. No, that person loves you because they come into you and telling you something that they see in you that's not right. And they want you to get it together. They want you to change it. They want you to correct it. Because they may see you heading down the wrong path. They may see something negative is going to come out the situation. Nothing good is going to come out if you continue to go down that wrong path. And then if you choose to go down that wrong path, you choose to do things your way. And then if something happened, then you looking sad, you looking crazy. And then you, if you sit down with yourself and you start thinking like, dang, I should have listened. Such and such was trying to tell me, but I was all in my fiddles because women, we are emotional creatures. Because we are. That's what God created us to be. We are weak and we are emotional. Because that's what the Bible says. We are emotional creatures. We think we so caught up in our feelings to where you not even thinking about Hey, such and such came and told me, but like, listen, you need to leave such and such alone. I see you heading down the right path. You need to leave this alone. You need to do this, this, that, and the third so you can start feeling better about yourself. And we think it's somebody judging you. It's not judgment. It's part of constructive criticism. It's part of that person telling you the truth. So you won't go down that path to where you done made a mistake and now you got to pull up your big girl panties and deal with it and go through it and then hopefully once you deal with it and don't go through it you have been to learn your lesson but like listen I done been down this path before I don't want to go back down this route no more let me get myself together and listen to some constructive criticism. Let me listen to the truth and just keep it pushing. Some females, you know, I, I can tell y'all a story. When me and my baby sister, we was walking home. I want to say, I think we had got off the bus. I can't remember. We was walking home. It's like a long stretch of road. 
and it's like a little side it's a long sidewalk to get to my mom's house me and her was walking and um when you turn in the neighborhood it's like a railroad track but as we was walking down into the neighborhood this guy had we saw because we was walking this way the guy was coming out we was going in the guy was coming out so he passed us and we didn't pay no mind and then he made a u-turn and came back down that way rolled down his window on the passenger side but like hey 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 we ain't paying no attention because that's one thing that's one one of my pet peeves i can't stand what i mean but like Psst. Psst. hey yo yo what kind of foolishness like that i'm not no animal <laughs> it say excuse me miss be respectful i can't stand that there's some that's some foolishness so we didn't pay him no mind and then he was like, excuse me, we, and we stopped. And I had my little pepper spray and my little knife together right there on my side, ready. So he was like, hey, how old are you? My sister was like, "I'm uh, listen, y'all, I was in my 20s. This dude look all of 50-something years old. My sister was like, she 14, my sister was 19. 20 at the time. I was in my late 20s at the time. Or early 30s. I, yeah, I was in my early 30s. No, no. No, I wasn't in my early 30s. I was in my mid, late 20s. And my sister was like, what, 19 at the time. So, uh, <laughs> I told that dude I was 16 years old and my sister said she was 14. Now, my, keep in mind, my baby sister is like 5'7", five, 5'8", five, and I'm all of 5'4". And he couldn't tell our ages, but and then he he took off. I'm like, when you're young like that, and a lot of older men tend to be like, hey, hey, and then some of us females we fall for it because we are getting the attention. That's what it is. It's the attention. It's because this man took out the time to notice me. Because some of us have very low self-esteem. Whether you want to admit it or not, we do have low self-esteem about ourselves. Especially when you don't have a father in your life. Especially when your mother has multiple kids and she's a single mom and she really doesn't have that much individual time to cater and to nurture that one child as you know a uh, one child has much more catering and nurture than you if your mother had four five six multiple more kids because her time has to go through all of them you know what i'm saying so you know we'll see the red flags later on in life or sometimes you may see the red flags at the beginning but you push it to the side because oh he's handsome he's tall he got big feet and he's dark skin light skin whatever he got good hair he drive a nice car it's because of the attention that you're getting and you don't have a good self esteem about yourself and you didn't have a father to show you and to guide you and to put you up on game. Yo, if this boy spit this game to you, don't fall for it. He just wants something else. He just wants your body. He don't want to get to know you. He'll get to know you to a certain extent. And once he gets you, he gone. So. We also tend to develop survival a survivor mentality when you don't have a father figure in your life you develop a survivor mentality um, you very watchful um, you learn ways to survive and how to I want to say save or may not save you watch your mother um survivor skills as being a single parent and you tend to take on those same survivor skills as a daughter we do develop a survivor mentality as a young girl we don't trust men at all 
So those are one of the effects. We don't trust men. We don't trust men. We don't trust no man, to be honest. You don't trust authoritative men because you're not used to that. When you see a strong man, a authoritative man, your wall immediately goes up. And it's hard to break through that wall because you have trust issues. Which I can completely understand because that was me. I had a big strong wall up and it was hard to get through. When I was going through things and going through things in my relationship, I didn't lose no sleep. I didn't stay up and cry because such and such was doing this and such and such was cheating on me. Such and such was doing all this. I went to sleep. I got my rest. I remember one time my mom was like, how can you sleep easily by closing my eyes and getting my tail in the bed? Because I didn't lose no sleep at all. I dealt with it the next day, during the day. But at nighttime, I took my shower and I ate my food. I got myself ready for work the next day. And I went to bed. I didn't have no time to deal with that late at night. Yes, I cried when I was in a relationship and I'm giving my all. Thinking I'm giving my all. And getting played. Or getting cheated on. Yes, I may have cried or shared a couple of tears here and there, but you bet you best believe later on that night I'm going to bed. Didn't lose not no sleep at all. I would get my rest. That's one thing I can't say. Like I say that we do have abandonment issues. Um we can be less receptive of a man's help. Because we are not used to a man helping or helping out or helping around. Um, we have this memento of, oh, I can do it by myself. I don't care what no one must say. You can't go through life without leading, needing a man's help. Because there are a lot of jobs that men do work on in our society that we need on a daily basis on a regular basis 24 7 and if a man doesn't go out and do it you won't have the necessities that you need like electricity you need your electricity i don't see women out there climbing on poles and high poles and sky rises fixing on poses and, and for the electricity for you to have. Going out there in them storms fixing on electricity. Stop lights and stuff like that. Stop signs. There are a lot of things. Mechanics. When your car break down I don't too, too much see me female mechanics around here. Heck, some of us don't even want to pump our own gas. But we do it because we have to. But there are a lot of things that men do that we need on a consistent basis every day, 24-7, that men do that we need help on. Because when you... When you when your tire breaks out, if you don't know how to change that tire, you're going to take it to a man. When that oil change need to be changed, if you don't know how to do it, you will take it to a man. Heck, some of us will even talk to a man for them to pay our bills. To get your hair and your nails done. Now that I do know. So there's no one who can sit there and tell me because I have seen it done so many times. I know friends that have done it. I know a lot of people who would say, oh, I'm going to, oh, he's going to pay for me. He's going to take me out. He's going to pay my stuff. He's going to pay for my hair, my nails.
So, um, us not having that male figure in your life, um, you don't know how to be submissive. Sometimes we can be very competitive because, you know, by your mother being a single mother and you not having that father figure in your life, we tend to be very competitive. Uh, that was one of the things that I had to look at as well. You know, we take one, oh, I can do it by myself. Oh, I can do it by myself. But we ain't supposed to do it by ourselves. You know, it it's crazy because even though I'm close to my father, even though I can tell him anything, I still needed my father in my life to guide me, to show me what to look out for in a relationship, what to put up with, what not to put up with. You know, I needed that guidance. I needed that love from him to show me the way. Um, even if my dad didn't live in the same household, I still needed that guidance. I still needed that love from him. To be honest, I don't think my dad knows my favorite color. Um, I don't think my dad knows what makes me happy, what makes me sad. I don't even know my dad's favorite color. Um... I know some of the things that he likes to do. Um, my dad knows some of the things that I like to do, but that's basic. I'm talking about like deep things. Even the basic stuff matters as well. You know, I know my dad loves to dance. My dad's goofy like me. My dad's funny. Um, my dad loves to travel. I love to travel. I love to dance. I'm, I'm very goofy. Um, we love to do things. I love to do things. My dad knows how to cook. I may not cook as better than my dad, but my dad is a neat freak. I'm not a neat freak. I know how to clean, but I'm not a neat freak like my dad. Um, so there are a lot of things that I do know about my dad. There are a lot of things that I don't know about my dad. There's a lot of things that my dad don't know about me. Um, so... Those are the things that, you know, by a father being in a girl's life, she can tell a man, no, I'm not going to talk to you. I already know your game. I already know what you're trying to do. It's not going to work. And she'll keep it pushing because she's going to hear her daddy's words in her mind. She's going to know what to look out for. She'll be like, oop, like a little maze. It come here, boom, boom, like this. She'll navigate through life easily and better. It won't be hard. It won't be as hard. It won't be as difficult. She'll been to save herself a lot of heartache and headache by a father being in their lives. A father is very important. I don't care what nobody say. People always say, no, a father, I don't need them. Yes, you do. You need your father in your life. You do. The little girl's heartbreak is from her father. Her first heartbreak is from her father not being there. Now, there are certain circumstances, like I stated, like if your father was sent away, and when he, if he was locked up, sent away, or if your father passed, that's something totally different. That still it still hurts regardless you know that still hurts but if she have uncles in her life grandparents that may be still living that can be able to guide her that helps but if she doesn't have a trustworthy uncles if she doesn't have trustworthy grandparents she doesn't have a male figure in her life to show her the way. It just is bad. Um, it's that's that's some of the things that affect. I know 
I seen this video of this woman. Um, she's no longer talking to her family at this time. She didn't state the reason why. But she did state that she still struggles with abandonment issues. And I know there are a lot of adults, people that's like in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, that still deal with abandonment issues, but they didn't seek the help with those abandonment issues. Some of them may not have addressed it or talked about it or even got some type of counseling or some type of help about it. And they hold on to that abandonment issues. You go through all your adult life and, you know, you're getting older, older, and you're in your 70s and 80s, 60s, 50s, 40 years old, and you're still dealing with abandonment issues. Even though we may be 40 or 50 or 60, your mind is still probably still at that child's age. You're probably still at that 5-year-old, 4-year-old, 8-year-old, 10-year-old age. Because you're, you're still stuck at that particular age of when your father was no longer there. Now, if you never seen your father, you still have issues. Or oh, whatever age that your father left, you still have abandonment issues that need to be addressed. Talk it out. Doing what I'm doing, just talk it out. Talk it out with somebody that you trust. If you don't want to talk to somebody that you know, go see a counselor. They don't know you whatsoever. They hear, they there to hear what all you got to say, and they're gonna give you solutions to your problems. Maybe it's time for you to search for your father or search for your father's family if you can do that. If you know where your father at, maybe it's about time for you to talk to him and let him know, but like, hey, I'm dealing with abandonment issues. I'm dealing with a lot of things, wishing that you could have been there, like what's going on, what happened, why you left, like why you left me like that. But when I had my surgery for my gallbladder surgery, my father did come up and me and him had a long, interesting conversation. And I asked my dad some very important questions. And my dad basically told me why he wasn't there. And I was like, hmm. Now it all made sense. Now I see why you left. But I just wish that my dad could have been more consistent in my life instead of waiting until I reach a certain age to try to be more consistent. You know what I'm saying? Because a child development ages between birth to 10 years old or 6 years old the, that is the time frame that a father needs to be in their child's life for those de development develop ages. Yeah. I read it somewhere. I think it said between birth and six or birth and five. Somewhere between those ages. Don't quote me, but I think it said between those ages that those are the highly development ages for a child. Um, Sometimes fathers not being there can affect their child's mental health. i seen a video about that too, about mental health, because... A lot of kids tend to act out when their father is not around. Especially boys. Little boys tend to, when they get older, they tend to act out. They'll act out quicker than what a female will. They will. Um, 
children do not respect authority, especially when they go to school, especially when they don't have a father in the household or when they don't have a mother in the household. They'll say, well, you not over me and you ain't my mama, you ain't my father. Because they don't have that respect there. They don't have that respect over authority. Now, there are some kids that may have two parents in a household and they may not act like that at home, but they'll act like that at school because they just showing out. They just try to fit in. Or there may be some kids that may act like that at home and the parents just don't have no control over them whatsoever. None. They lost all bit of their parenting. Just went straight on out the door. The child is over the parents and the parents is not over the child. Now that's crazy. I've not seen that happen. Okay, so I wrote this down. I had to acknowledge that by my father not being there Based upon my decisions in life, he is not the cause, whether positive or negative. I had to own up to my own decisions. And that's, that is a true saying. As you get older, you can no longer blame your father not being there. It's the cause of why you, you're continually doing negative stuff in your life. At some point, you have to acknowledge what you're doing, which is causing you to have negative issues going on. You have to take accountability for your own actions as you get older. You can no longer blame, oh, I'm acting this way because my dad is not there. You chose, Keyword is chose, to act that way or to do something where you know which is wrong. Because by now you should know right from wrong. You know the consequences if you do right. It will be positive consequences. You also know there will, if you do wrong, there will be negative consequences. You will pay for your actions. Negative consequences does not discriminate. No, regardless of who you are. Steps to overcome. Tell the truth. Give up the story. Of. What it should have been. You're going to have to move forward. The biggest thing is forgive yourself of why your father wasn't there. Because it has nothing to do with you whatsoever. You had no control of that. You was an innocent child in that situation. You didn't ask to be here. So forgive yourself as why you don't you didn't have your father in your life. Don't continue to blame yourself. Forgive yourself. So those are some of the things that I've written down, you guys. If you would like to see a part two of this, let me know down in the comments. I hope y'all enjoyed this video. It was difficult, but I wanted to get that off my chest, you guys. But like I stated, you know, forgive yourself. Because I forgave myself a very long time ago. But you know, sometimes that old man try to creep back in. Be like, nah, you ain't gonna forgive him. No, you got to. So make sure you forgive yourself, you guys. Okay? Alright, so if you like this video, make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Share, share, share. And hit spam up them comments and let me know what you think about this video, you guys. So stay tuned to the next video. And I will see y'all. Peace.